Hello, friends and family, and welcome to the meditation hour of crippling anxiety due to a global pandemic. That doesn't sound quite as good as the other titles so far. Um, I, uh, I was talking yesterday about um, this idea of coming from the outside and working your way inward um, through kind of these logical sense spheres based on um, an arbitrary model I created. Um, you can think of it in, in different ways, um, but I would, I would encourage this, this path kind of toward um, inner experiences uh, today, I wanted to address um, an adjacent concept, and that is that uh, often when people begin meditating, they often struggle with a starting point. So, which teacher should I choose? Which technique should I choose? which school of thought, which philosophy, which posture, what time of day. And I, I obviously have specific recommendations there, but I won't go into them. But my personal suggestion, um, the way that I started doing any of this, and uh, I think a tool that most people will find very useful uh, is skepticism. And I think liberally applied skepticism will take you very far. It is, it is easy for us to get into a position where we've established some amount of faith or trust in a person or an organization or a belief structure. And because of that, we can potentially slip into a, a default mode of trust. And I, I think um, this is uh, particularly dangerous and particularly of interest when it comes to meditation, um, that meditative states are, um, they're an opportunity for someone to take advantage of you potentially if uh, some philosophy is being espoused. Um, and in particular, uh, if it's your own philosophy. So if it's already something you believe, um, you will only deepen yourself and deepen yourself in this philosophy, in this idea. And not only that philosophy and that idea, but your interpretation of that philosophy and that idea. Which is inherently limited. We are inherently limited animals and we don't have the full picture yet. And so it is beneficial to us to remain skeptical, even of our own beliefs, um, perhaps especially of our own beliefs. Um, the example I'm going to take is actually from astrophysics. I find that this is a recurrent theme in astrophysics, and I don't know why. Um, this is a line from a poem written by an astrophysicist, um, and I'll read it to you. There's much more to the poem, but this one particular line caught me. I want you to believe you are insignificant. I want you to believe you are insignificant. 
I don't know what any of that has to do with astrophysics. Um, and I find that many astrophysicists, scientists in general who I respect, take this position and it is, it's not an unreasonable position, but it's a strange position to espouse into the scientific mindset because it doesn't belong. Am I significant or insignificant? I don't know. But I also know that astrophysics doesn't know. There's no astrophysics experiment that tells the astrophysicist about her significance in the universe. And there's no scientific experiment which tells the experimenter about his or her significance in the universe. This isn't a known quantity. This isn't something science has uncovered. This isn't something humanity has uncovered. And even if it were, it's something that you have to know yourself inherently, your own significance. No one else could possibly tell you about that. And so the difficulty is in the first part of the line, I want you to believe. Why would a scientist want you to believe anything? Science says, experience it, observe it, use empirical methods. Um, science also applies other sensible methods on top of that, but <laughs> um, at its core, science is about objective or as objective as possible observation and uh, empiricism. And I think that the, these are, are valuable tools um, and we can apply them in science and outside of science. Um, meditation can be like that. Meditation can be uh, an empirical investigation of your consciousness and um, your self, whatever that is. What is, who am I, what am I? Okay, let me figure that out by investigating. Um, but it is really only direct experience, your own experiences which can tell you this. Um, and it is tempting, it has been tempting, it will be tempting to lean on the people we trust for answers. So I trust astrophysicists with many things. I certainly trust them to do astrophysics correctly, as we've defined it. I don't trust them to come to me with the meaning of life and deep philosophical insights. That's not the purpose of astrophysics. Um, and certainly astrophysics can perhaps paint my philosophical picture of the universe, but it is not going to define it. And I think that it is equivalently risky um, to allow anyone or anything to define your philosophical perspective of the universe. How are things shaped? Why are things shaped the way that they are? This is the value of meditation, in my opinion, that you can figure these things out for yourself, by yourself, within yourself. You don't need a telescope. You don't need a microscope. You don't need a Bible. You don't need the Quran. You don't need the Gita. You don't need the Tao Te Ching, um, which is my favorite go-to philosophical book. <laughs> um, and I still like what's written in it. I still like what is written in those other books to varying degrees. Right? <laughs> Some of those books are better than others, um, in my opinion. But you can use all of that information um, and contextualize it. Um, but you should be skeptical of it or you should frame it in an appropriate way. And the same is true for meditation. Um, 
try the meditation that you're interested in. Excuse me. See if it works for you. See what the results are. What are the changes that come about from the meditation? If the changes themselves are limited, perhaps that meditation is limited for you. And perhaps you should try another meditation. Um, and especially early in your meditation career, it's valuable to explore the different options in the same way that early in your professional career, it is valuable to explore different workplaces. Not everyone is comfortable working for the government. Not everyone is comfortable working for a large corporation. Not everyone is comfortable working for a nonprofit or a startup, but someone is. And you won't know until you try working for one of those organizations or for yourself, for that matter. Um, so skepticism, I endorse it. <laughs> I would strongly encourage you to pursue your meditation with a healthy dose of skepticism. Be skeptical of the teachers, be skeptical of the practices, be skeptical of the literature until you see it for yourself. Um, yeah, I think that's enough for today. Um, we can do uh, 10 minutes here. I'll just get my timer. I have my 10 minute timer ready if you want to get yours ready. And I'll start now.
that's our timer. And it occurs to me that I didn't uh, remember to put the caveat at the beginning of the video um, for anyone who's watching it who doesn't know me. Um, if it comes at the end, I guess it's a disclaimer instead. Uh, but that disclaimer is that this is not meditation instruction and I'm not a meditation instructor. This is just an ongoing conversation with some friends and family um, who are trying to meditate while they deal with um, some anxious moments during the current global crisis. <laughs> I hope everyone is happy and healthy and taking care of themselves and I will see you all tomorrow.